All right, we got a video from Tommy G. Gonna be not gonna be my video, the original anime link below, and it's called The Most Wanted Drivers in New York. All right, let's get it, let's go. Okay, easy, Tiger. Easy, 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 easy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey. How many police chases do you think you've been in? 30, I think. On a scale of one to 10, how wanted would you say you are? Probably a 10, nobody's more wanted than me. I wasn't lying when I said these guys are wanted. These guys are living GTA in real life. Folks, I'm Tommy G. I'm here with the most wanted drivers in New York. Hey, I'm Sweet Bird. Swimmers! Swim team, you already know what's going on. I love NYPD. Swim team, <laughs> the dream team. So buckle up, folks. This is going to be a wild ride. One day in the safety of my home in Milwaukee, I started to get bombarded by DMs imploring me to explore these two drivers named Squeeze Benz and Where's 981. When I looked at their pages, their driving shocked me. I would describe their videos as daring, dangerous, and reckless. I'm fascinated by the human desire to push limits and go against the grain. I'm fascinated by the daredevils and outlaws of the world. Young men in particular love to do this in a variety of ways. Evil Knievel shot himself out of a cannon, Philip Petit tightrope walked across the Twin Towers, Alex Honnold climbed up cliffs without a rope, and fighter Darren Till cut yeah. weight until he went blind. Line. The question that comes to mind when they're you look not at this behavior lives, is what compels like. someone to push themselves to such lengths and risk injury or death. In today's video, we investigate this daredevil behavior in the form of reckless drivers who are causing outrage and. These guys, these guys before are not endangering people's lives. A boxing. Road in the form of reckless drivers who are causing outrage and fascination across New York. Police tried to pull over a car on West 38th Street and 7th Avenue. The driver sped off, slamming into cars, driving on the sidewalk, and even hitting a dining shed. But there's a twist in the story, because Jesus. these guys don't just risk their own necks in the stunts, they also risk the lives of innocent pedestrians and the law enforcement that chases them. These guys regularly go on police chases and evade police helicopters. Today, we interview them face-to-face -face and talk morality, ethics, danger, and their motivation for their behavior. Let's dive in and go boots on the ground. This documentary is purely for educational purposes. We want to stress that the behavior depicted in this video is dangerous, illegal, and should never be imitated. And remember, yes. it only takes one bad crash to ruin your life or someone else's. Uh -huh. Please drive responsibly. Thank you. Two with the FA7. Two microphone in my section. We wanted to know how everyday people felt about this kind of driving. We had some extra time to kill at the New York airport, so I went around showing people videos of Squeeze Benz and Where's 981 driving. Here's what they had to say about it. What do you think of that? It's just dangerous. <laughs> I think if the police go off, then it's a bit dangerous. Was everyone else at risk? He's probably going 120, 130 right now. See how there's some close calls? I feel like he thinks he's in a video game. He has stuff that pisses me off. So I got kids that are on those roads too. When that guy hits one of my kids, he'll say, I don't know what happened. I could tell this guy a million times, hey, you're going to kill somebody on the road. He's going to do it anyway. What do you think about that? It makes me mad. I get it. All kids, they're bred to do that, right? But it's still it's irresponsible. If I told you that this guy's gotten away from not only multiple police but also helicopters. Oh, no, What's your reaction on that? I believe it. I just feel like it's really selfish. I feel like he should get his license taken away for some period of time and probably have to go through safe driving classes, maybe talk to people who are victims of people I that drive like him. I think it should be him. commensurate with like attempted manslaughter or something mm. like I mean, yeah. that's in effect. Yeah. You're putting people at risk yeah. intentionally when you go a certain speed over the speed limit. If you were his mother or father, what would you tell him? That he's a selfish idiot. One of these days, somebody is going to get in his way and that person's going to end up dead or many people are going to end up dead and if he ends up dead that's his consequence for what he does but nobody else deserves to have that kind of risk it's no different than someone who's really drunk getting behind the wheel of a car and driving when they have no control i mean your car is actually like a weapon of mass destruction it has to be handled with care worse mm. than being drunk and getting behind the wheel because you're actively making the choice to put other people's lives at risk. The it's steepest price, price that gets paid is not the person driving the car. I mean, someone's going to end up dying and that'll be that. That can ruin hundreds of people's lives. Like if a kid in a school were to die, everybody in the school it's would a be mourning yeah. for that one person. Oh yeah, he's tripping. Not safe at all. If he hits somebody, do you think it should be manslaughter or the first degree? I say manslaughter because you know what 
you're doing, like you're just driving crazy. Like, what would you tell him if you could say something to him? I'd be like, slow down. What do you think about driving like this? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. I don't like it. Like, he better stay away from that. Yeah. What should be the penalty if he's caught? Um, Manslaughter or first degree? That's another debate. If he hits somebody, you mean if he kills somebody, it's vehicular yeah, manslaughter. This guy has an ability to get away from multiple police vehicles, and including helicopters. Right. So he hasn't been caught. Uh, Yesterday, he got away from a helicopter. Where? In New York or California? New York. Wow. What kind of car is he renting? Lamborghini. I can see I was out running the comps. I guess we could hope for him hitting a telephone pole. Get Turn him. yourself in, brother. You're a reckless driver and you're going to hurt innocent people. How are they not tracking these cars? I don't understand how they're not tracking these cars back to, back to the rental guys. Like, what? Huh? I got folks taking pics, something like a pop rat. I'ma go and get the test. I don't really like the mods. Really getting to the check, but I ain't rocking on her We're on our way to meet Squeeze Benz. Recently, he's been making the news for his high speed stunts. While some people see his driving as exhilarating or exciting, there's a rising sentiment that this sort of behavior unnecessarily endangers innocent drivers and pedestrians. He sent us the address of a random parking garage and told us to pull up. This is what we encountered. Folks, we're on the way to talk to one of the most wanted drivers in New York, Squeeze Benz. This kid does stuff that makes my butthole pucker up. Pause. This guy is yeah, pause. This guy is extreme. This guy drives at a very high speed. I do not drive like this. You shouldn't drive like this. And there's a reason why I'm not getting into their cars while they're driving this fast. It's dangerous. It's reckless. It's scary. Disclaimer: Don't do this. Wait, wasn't he in the car? I'm like a high speed fugitive. I'm always interested in the outlaws of the world, people that live on the edge. Humans, especially men, are always pushing the limits of danger. But one distinction I want to make is Evil Red Knievel is that like only a harms himself if he fails. The UFC fighters are both signing up. They're in mutual combat but these guys if something goes wrong they harm innocent civilians so i want to ask him about that but then ask him about the outlaw the testing danger peace that lives strongly within them because i think that's interesting this is not a product placement i do not want a partnership with celsius i do not drink your drinks every single trip multiple times a day i don't absolutely love your drink guys if you want to hit me up please do i would love to talk to you Otherwise, I'll probably hit up Prime and you know how that goes. So we're pulling up to meet Squeeze Benz. I'm excited. I hope you are too. You know, high speed must be an issue around here if they have a Mustang NYPD car that's got some zip to it. RIP Mainstream Media. It's been a great run. Kudos to you for lasting as long as you have. But that's it. I mean, that's you're finished. It's sorry. In honor of that, RIP oh, yeah, Mainstream yeah, yeah, Media. Yeah, Sweatshirts available. TommyGMcGee.com. Oh, oh my God, God, dude. What the f is this Batman, dude? On a scale of one to ten, how one? I mean, look at that you? car. That car is so quick. Them, Lam, Lam, it's a Lamborghini Urus. Them cars are so quick. It's insane how quick they are. God, and people aren't idiots. Yeah, I've heard of that highway in Germany. They need to build tracks as well. I feel like I feel like, I feel like they build tracks, like affordable tracks as well. Where they can just blow some tires or eat around no track. Doesn't cost an arm and a leg, I think they they would fine. And nobody's more wanted than me. Really? Yeah. That's insane. It started like about a year ago. I got my first Benz and I always did like little driving videos and I never really took it to nothing. And then my boy started saying, like, you know, mad people are blowing up off this. And I was just like, you know, that's just how it started. I'm curious, like, you have a Lamborghini and at one point a Mercedes Benz. I'm sure you go through a lot of different cars. Are you going on tour and just driving people's cars all crazy? crazy. Are you guys getting your own cars? Like, tell me about that. I had my own car for a bit, but then I changed it up because I did get chased a lot. So I just realized, like, you know, doing long term rentals is just a way better route. And then obviously, I don't tell these guys on street Benz. Did you ever get blown up by the tour people asking what the hell? Long time happened? rentals. Ask, How are they not then, tracking like, these I'm rentals? Just, like, you know, I'm just driving the car. You, know I mean? you mix danger, but there's also other people at risk when you do that. Innocent civilians. So, what do you think about the element of danger for that? I've been doing this since like real shit since I was nine. I used to take my dad's car out and I used to just bug out. I've been doing this for so long now that I feel like I did as a professional. I, like, you know, niggas know, like, that's how I drive. There's been incidents where I've gone out with people and they try keeping up with me and they crash. How fast do you go? I mean, there's been a video on live where I've gone one handed 210 miles an hour. Filming with one hand, driving with the other 210 miles an hour. Yeah. That's insane. Did that scare you? Not really. Just to build up a tolerance of just speed. Do you feel like the police? watch your Instagram? 100% they do. Let's pop in the car and keep the conversation going. Oh, he does get in the car. Yeah, these Euruses are quick as fuck. How many people normally 
Yeah, compared to like, am I in the high end of this? High end. <laughs> That's okay. Does your mom worry about you? Boy, I call it. She don't even want to hear the things that I'm doing. She began scared because she know I be doing shit. Like you know what I mean? Do you know any friends that have gotten really hurt or died doing this? My boy, he was racing and he knocked up and he hit his head and his head like split open a little bit. He needed stitches, but like other than that, nothing's ever happened. Tell me about the camera system in New York. How hard is it to evade capture or awareness of the police? Super easy. A lot of people like, like they be doing crimes with their plates on. Like I mean, if I go and run from a cops, I'm gonna make sure I either have uh, altered plates or no plates at all. New York City is home to one of the most advanced camera surveillance mm. networks on the planet. An Amnesty International project identified that there are more than 25,000 public and private cameras at traffic intersections across the city. This camera technology can capture faces and other details from up to 400 feet away. This infrastructure isn't cheap either. This camera technology combined with cell phone tracking tools, spyware, and facial recognition racked up nearly $3 billion in expenditures from the NYPD from 2007 to 2019. When street racers run rampant in the city, it's easy for governments to make the argument to increase the surveillance in order to shut down this reckless and deadly behavior. However, this same technology can also be used to capture the profiles of millions of civilians on a daily basis, something that is currently happening in China and that many Americans are afraid of. As technology such as AI facial recognition recognition and high def wow. cameras increase in quality, this is a challenge we are going to have to wrestle with to ensure the very tech that can help keep us safe also doesn't grow too powerful to infringe upon our freedoms. All right. What are the different penalties for if you got caught doing what we're doing? Jail time. I'm running red lights. I'm doing more than triple the speed limit, double the speed limit. This is a lot of tickets to it. You did a video in Times Square recently, right? Yeah. I gotta send it back for all my insecurities. I do like some work without a clean up bag. Nah, that's insane. <laughs> nah, that's insane. It only takes one mistake to permanently change or destroy somebody's life. I do understand that. It just like, we were also like, it was a lot of people, 12 o'clock in the morning, you seen in the video, like I stopped, looked around, made sure there was nobody and started doing donuts. And then when I was running the red lights, I'm not gonna lie, I was low-key bugging. I low-key know how to run red lights. I've been chased by Mac Cox to the point where I could blow the red lights doing 60, 70. No, I'm not gonna get my too. What is your strategy in getting away from police? Hopping on the highway. These cops, like, they're not really built for that. It's a lot of real rookie cops now. A bunch of rookie cops, and these guys do not Know how to drive on the highway. Let's talk about how drivers like Benz can evade detection for so long. They do so by altering or covering up their license plates so the car cannot be tracked by police or the traffic cameras. Cars with this modification have been nicknamed ghost cars. Last month, a joint task force was launched between New York Governor's Kathy Hochul, New York Mayor Eric Adams, the NYPD, and the MTA to crack down on the issue of ghost cars. In their first day alone, they impounded 73 cars, issued 282 court summons, and made eight arrests. And I noticed the same thing back home in Milwaukee. The guys running through the red lights, driving the stolen cars, and driving aggressively, most of them do not have license plates. What's the well, probably even license. That's a pretty long chase. <laughs> How many guys do you think were chasing you at once? How many? I like three, four, but the main thing was the helicopter. That was a really hard to go to. Luckily, it was late night. I was in the Porsche, and that shit does 210 miles an hour. So I just hopped on the highway, you know what I mean? The helicopter can only go so fast. You go faster than the helicopter? Yeah, they only like top out like 150, 150. No, You crash into somebody, they get paralyzed, they die. Do you think you deserve to go to prison? Yes. Obviously, I wouldn't want to be put into prison for life. If I kill somebody, that's somebody's life. Like, that's somebody's mother, brother, cousin, whatever the case is. If somebody crashed into my mom and her car, and they killed them, I'd want them to go to jail. You know what I mean? Maybe not for life, but just enough Bad to get in their head, like, you know? What makes taking these risks? Worth it. They're not really risk to me, that's the thing. I don't really see them as risk. I see them as like, you know, me just everyday driving. You said you've been driving since you were nine years old? My dad used to give me his car. You know, I used to sit on his lap when I was like seven. He used to give me the steering wheel that. And then, you know, I hit nine. But he used to send me, yo, go to AutoZone real quick. I used to go to AutoZone, Home Depot, whatever the pieces. For 13, I used to start picking up my boys. And that's when I started really like, you know, cutting up. This oh my motherfuck. Okay, oh. easy, Tiger. Easy, 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 easy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. No more, no more. Ooh, that mother made me. Imagine me doing that. At 100? Yeah, that's, that's really nothing. How many police chases do you think you've been in? More than my hands. There's been so many times where, like, the boys just get behind us and they start chasing. But, like, it's not really chases to us. It's really back home. Do you think you're the most wanted driver in New York? Between me and where's 981, like, where's 981, don't you die down? I feel like I've taken over that spot, so yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of young men that watch your content. 
What do you think about kids that want to go try and replicate this, copy this? The sweet vents himself do not come try this. This is something that you can get paralyzed, you can die. I don't drive like this, you shouldn't. Well, I'm Some glad he's not promoting it in a way that people, people want to do this. Highly advised. But still, people yeah. are going to want to do this. How sophisticated is the camera system in New York? It's getting more sophisticated Especially now. Young where, like, you know, it takes them probably two, three days to really find where he was at. You know what I mean? How do you stash your vehicle so that the police don't trace you to your house? I for garage. I have one parking garage where I park my car. So just like a drug dealer has trap houses, you have different. I have trap houses. Yeah. We got. Are you nervous at all? I'm fucking nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are right here. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what? The... Doing this video is gonna expose him a bit though. Why do you think this is something that young men gravitate towards? Let's talk about brain development in young men. The male brain does not fully mature until about 25, so their prefrontal cortex that assesses risk is not fully developed yet, which helps to explain the risky behavior we see in this segment of the population. There's a name for this, young male syndrome. This sometimes short-sighted behavior is hypothesized to have provided an evolutionary advantage. A 2001 University of Liverpool study found that females prefer brave males who take risks to the ones that do not. And if we go back thousands of years to being hunter-gatherers on the savanna, this preference makes sense as a female would want the male that fends off the lion or stands to fight when another rival tribe approaches. Biologically, not much has changed in our brains then, but our technology has progressed much further, and it helps to explain why you see young men doing high-speed chases and drifting through Times Square. What's the craziest getaway story you have? So I'll be the one with the helicopter. I pulled up on the highway patrol in the truck, he was about to pull someone over, so I got behind him, I started playing with him, and I was recording, I got away obviously. A week later, I started getting chased by two, three black chargers. I'm looking up, and I see the helicopter above me and I'm like oh no nah. it was only like my second other ever helicopter chase so my heart was bumping I'm not knowing how hard these guys are gonna go for me right now they're gonna set a roadblock up something you know what I mean but thank god that wasn't the case like a spike strip that's never happened to me I don't need to give these niggas advice but like I don't know why they don't use spike strips is it hard for you not to be going faster <laughs> honestly yeah <laughs> now they're gonna use spike strips they should put a place where people can do this and have fun in a safe environment Give us a spot. Yes, that's what I was saying. How long do you see yourself doing this spot? She's not going to be a forever thing. I'm actually going to turn into a brand. How often do you drive reckless? Every day, but to Let's talk about reckless driving in the United States. In 2021, there were 6 million car crashes and 39,500 of them were fatal. A survey by the insurance company Nationwide found that 47% of Gen Z reported driving faster than the speed limit and 34% of them reported video chatting while driving. Actions like this help contribute to car crashes being the leading cause of death for American teenagers. Another concerning fact is the amount of pedestrians killed by reckless driving. In 2022, there were 7,500 deaths in this manner. In New oh. York, vehicular manslaughter is a felony that carries a steep sentence of up to 15 years. We took two Polaroids, they're fresh off the press, still developing. We're gonna put them in two random Only people that buy merch for the next years? 40 Wait. Only 15 years? Hours, two people will get squeeze bands, Tommy G, Polaroid photos, RIP mainstream media, big dogs gotta eat. Hope to send this to you. Available on Patreon only are the wild and extended cut versions of the interviews with Squeeze Benz, including one right after he got finished with a helicopter chase, extended cut interview with Swim Team, and more. This is some good shit. Patreon. We find ourselves in another parking garage meeting with New York driver Where's 981 and his crew, the swim team. Swimming refers to the driving technique where they cut up, weaving in and out of traffic to get where they want to go. They've gained a lot of notoriety online, and I wanted to talk to them to learn more about them. The faster you go and the more dangerous you drive, the more views you get. All right, guys, you're pulling up to meet the swim team. You're one of the groups of the drivers. Why do you guys call yourself swim team? This is how it started, like, they call me float. You should be called float apostle. So, like, I guess it's like a, like a teacher. I will teach you how to float. And then it just turned into, like, you know, we started cutting up and stuff. It was almost like we were swimming through traffic. And they'll call me, like, Michael Phelps. So, we're swimming. How fast do you go sometimes? I'm hitting 150 every day. It's easy to hit 150, bro. Like, it's triple digits no matter what. Your 50, 60 miles an hour is my 100. Have you had any near misses? Yeah, of course. People come to me like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? I'm not going to try and teach you how to do it because of the simple fact that someone can get hurt. Thank you that I have not hurt anybody. It's like shooting a gun in an open field. Like, anybody can get hit with a straight bullet. If you hit somebody and they get really injured or die, what should be the punishment you think? I'm 
I'm going to jail a thousand percent. Yeah, it's worth it. Why? It's not worth it. That's the thing. I can't justify it, you know? What's it like being in a high-speed chase? Your first time, it feels crazy, bro. Like, you're like, like, you're scared to go home. Some way, somehow, you may get home. You, you have a little bit of tough, a tough night of sleep that first night. And then you make it to the second night, you make it to the next night, they never come. After that, it just you get numb to it, you know? What are the laws in New York for chasing people? Because I know in Milwaukee, oftentimes they don't chase you at a certain speed because they know it results in civilian deaths a lot of times when the chase happens. I, it depends on the cop, honestly. I've seen cops where one of my boys, this dude is going off-road, off-road in New York, and the f***ing cops following him off the road. It just takes that one, you know, that one cop that's just ready to be like, ah, I'm coming for you, and it's over. What does your mom think about this? I bring my mom to work, she's going 150, she didn't. She didn't get scared. In her eyes, she knows I'm a good driver. Like, she's got mother's prayers, of course, she's gonna always pray for me, make sure everything works out every single time, but she's not too sure. You created Slim, right? I wouldn't say I created Slim, so it started off so I'm here with and I'm Tommy G allegedly who out of this group is the high speed specialist this nigga right here is a nasty old attack. This nigga right here is a nasty old attack. That's why I drift, go past. What's the fastest you guys have ever gone in a car before? 170? It's life or death speed. Right. What makes it worth it for you to put yourself in that position where you could go to the afterlife if you're not careful? Uh, rush, man. I'm rush. I'm not driving my car, but I just drive it down the road. If I die, I die. If I'm not living life, if I'm going to die for me, I'm not trying to go outside and die, obviously. I never, like, hopped in a car and went that fast off rip. It's kind of like, you know, I got used to it, slowly, you know, building up like a tolerance to speed. Or if you're watching this and you're a driver, then you know what I mean when you feel the rear wheels through the, through the seat of the car. That you're is, super in tune and in touch. Yeah. It's almost like the car is an extension of your body. Uh, yeah. You have senses from the seat, the steering wheel, the audio cues, how loud the engine is, if your tires are squealing. You have so many cues in it, and it's really up to you to take all that sensory input and be able to like drive properly. So it's like we're not trying to do this shit forever. Like we genuinely want to hop on the track, just go crazy. It's just to track it right now. It's just it's crazy. People are shutting the tracks down. Do you guys know anyone oh. that has crashed or I... died or gotten injured? They shot in the down? Pensive? Easy. Open them back up. Make them less ex expensive. Doing that? Uh, that's for sure, but nobody got to the shots in it. No one ever got to that. If anybody were to seriously get hurt or crash or anything like that, I think it'll, it'll end it for everybody. I think we don't stop. There's a risk of hurting someone that's completely yeah. innocent. Someone could be on their way to work. Someone could be going to pick up their kid from soccer practice. Like, how does that factor in your driving and what you think about when you drive? I get left, I get stuck, I get stuck, you know what I mean? What does that mean when you get left? If I'm following the 91 or I'm following the flow, and they think it's cut I can't take, I'm not taking it. I'm going to wait for them, we talk for each other, we drive for each other, we don't drive for ourselves, you know what I mean? I know exactly how each one of them drives and how I drive. So God forbid someone has to hard break, the cars behind are already breaking and looking for openings so we don't, we're not rear-ending each other. Have you guys had any near misses? Of course, but there was this one time where he took a cut, right after he took the cut, it was either I took the cut or I'm gone. It's funny saying this, but we're not criminals. We have real life jobs. We yeah. have insurance for our cars, we pay for our cars. Like, people think, oh, it's not Wait, what? Yeah, that yeah, should be pissing me off, bro, because I've done work hard as for this shit, bro. Do you guys' moms know about this? She knows. And she tells me every day to stop. And I tell her, look, I'm trying. We have a brand slim team, right? We're not trying to cut a reckless 24 7, bro. Like, we got a 5 m service coming up, a subtle forces service coming up. And honestly, like, we see the community, we see the love you guys are giving us, and we're not gonna take this and just, you know, throw it all away. It's like one of those stories we're trying to create where the bad guy kind of wins. So what do you say to the people that's that are enough. like super pissed when they see what you do? They're like, that's reckless, it's selfish, it's dangerous, people could die. What, what do you say to those type of folks? Honestly, bro, you're great. Right. I agree with them, bro. I don't even argue with them. Bro. I don't even argue with them, bro. I don't argue with them either. When people look at accidents and they see like us cutting up and like racing through traffic and a whole bunch of dumb stuff, they see it as not precise. Like they're thinking like we're just out there 
These guys could train up to be like car drivers, like actual racing car drivers. Like they obviously have skill in that. But why don't they do that? It's pretty obvious that they that they do this a lot, so they would have they would build up a skill for driving. Tell me what's going through your head in the police chase. How do you get away? What are you thinking about? Are you trying to go a few streets and take an exit? You got a hideout? Like, how do you evade police in this type of situation? There's people that might watch what you do and wonder how the police have not caught you yet. But what is your answer? I mean, truly, the way that we don't get caught is to stop being a dickhead. New York has a no, no chase policy. I can say this because I've been in like, at least in Swim, at least. I got into the most kind of chases, right? I'm not saying it because I like that. It's just, I got the worst luck, bro. I'm going to be honest. I got the, the worst luck on the point. I wanted to know what the legal perspective was on what swim team squeeze and all these other New York drivers were doing. What were the legal ramifications? How much jail time could they face? And why is it that they were so brazen about continually doing this? I talked to my guy Nate the lawyer to figure out more about this. He's a lawyer that runs a YouTube channel and breaks things down regularly. This is what he had to say. My name is Nate the lawyer. I'm a former prosecutor and a former law school professor. And what you've just seen on screen is known as reckless driving. In the state of New York, you could serve up to a year in prison if you recklessly drive. Reckless driving in New York is simple. It's if you drive in a manner that, quote, unreasonably yeah. interferes with the free and proper use of the public highways or unreasonably endangers users of the public highway. Reckless driving is prohibited. Every person violating this provision shall be guilty of a misdemeanor, meaning you can serve up to a year in jail. If someone is injured or killed during the act of reckless driving, you could find yourself facing some serious charges. Dangerous and disturbing exclusive video of young people driving their cars recklessly just before one of the cars crashed and killed two people. Now this driver was charged with manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. He's facing up to 10 years in prison. If you are doing something that you know is inherently dangerous and could get Those someone killed or hurt, years. and then you do it anyway, that the law finds to be reckless and criminal in some cases. Driving a car 90 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone is reckless. Someone could get hurt, someone could get killed. And if someone does, then you are on the hook for that homicide. There may be no fear of repercussions because of New York's bail reform yeah. law. The misdemeanor of reckless driving, as you see on the screen, isn't eligible for bail. If someone commits this crime 10 times in the same day, they'll get bail every time because of New like York's really? bail reform laws. Now, some of you may not believe how insane New York's bail reform laws are, but they are insane. Like this guy who was arrested 101 times for shoplifting and let go every time because of New York's bail reform laws. Or this guy who was arrested for three assaults in one day, even through a brick That's through crazy. a store window. He was released every single time on bail reform. Or the story of these four people who chopped up two bodies, left body parts all around the state of New York, and then when the cops went to their home, they found blood, body parts, guts, everything in their home. Guess what the judge did? He released them no. without bail. When you put everything together, I think these guys are doing it because they don't really have any fear that they're going to kill anybody. And if they get caught reckless driving, they'll get arrested and charged, but they'll probably be let out the same day on bail reform. Then we can go out and do it again. If you need legal advice, if you're looking to this YouTube video to help you in your case, you're looking at the wrong place. With that being said, I'm Nate the Lawyer and I'm out. Peace. After hearing what Nate the Lawyer said, hearing that there's no wow. consequences really for what these guys are doing, it makes sense why they're doing it. Back to the swim team. How often do you guys get nervous doing this? So when I started, I used to get super nervous, especially when I used to run. And the reason I started running is not because I like I don't like cops. It's simply because like it got to a point where I can't afford the tickets anymore. Because I was getting singled out for no reason. The speed limit is 50, right? So I would be on the Belmar Bay and I'm going 70, 75. I'm doing the same speed everyone else can do. Mm -hmm. However, when the state trooper sees everyone else and me, they single me out because I'm in a white port. So then they think I can afford the ticket, but in the beginning, I could, but then that shit started stacking up. And if you're going to say, oh, then just don't speed, I wasn't speeding. I was just keeping up with the flow of traffic, right? And then I just started running one day because I just couldn't afford the tickets anymore. And then it just started from there. I was super nervous at first. You got to tell more. Okay. After the first time, I only got nervous one more time after that. But that was only because I got hit with a hotel. How many people were after you? Oh, I made a 15 cars? Yeah. Uh -huh.
Do you guys ever get away from helicopters before? I never had to. Thank God. Honestly, well, I feel like I don't see another video. Oh, yeah, I don't know what to do. Has the news reached out to any of you guys? Oh, yeah, of course. Bro, I ain't going for it. This is crazy. I'm like AV7. I don't like AV7 news at all. Because they reached out to me about my content and they still posted after I said no. And I don't like that. But yeah, this man who's already talking about this event, bro. So news reporters have reached out to you guys. They DM you, they, they, text you. they email you. Okay, so Ali Bauman from CBS New York. What made you say no to her and yes to me? Honestly, bro, you're not a cop. Yeah, you're not a cop. You're not associated with the law. You don't have an ulterior motive. I genuinely feel like you're not going to try to paint a bad picture with it. And we've you seen your videos, we've seen, seen the work you do, and the type of. Honestly, you've interviewed people that do worse stuff than us. Yeah, and it's always like, come on now. If you were keeping them safe, there's no reason why you wouldn't keep us safe, bro. To me, it feels really fun to have no journalistic background yeah. to be beating them at their own game. Nah, yeah, definitely. Honestly, bro, when you're an authentic person, you go far away. I feel like people in our generation just don't Back. trust the news. They've lied so many times that their credit's gone with us. That's what's happening right now. These individual news, um, slash interviewers, whatever you want to call them, they're like doing their own stuff. One man thing. They have these big corporates and they're out doing it. I think that's what that's going to be the in. in where people are gonna um, we're gonna go to the news individual stuff rather than. Pull over, take the tracker out the whip. Range Rover Sport, I'm on the jacket doing tricks. Keep swimming, got the paddles in the ship. Let's meet the swim team and let's hear their specialties. Well, swim team. You already know. And what's your specialty? My specialty is uh, floating. All I do is float. That's my name. That's what I do. It's everything. Do you feel like you have to look over your shoulder doing this kind of stuff? I always look over my shoulder. I'm always not anyone. I, I would say I'm kind of camera shy, but like my specialty is like I do a little bit of everything. But when it comes to like the, uh, you know, the corporate side of things, you know, the brand and stuff, like I'm basically like the brain behind the, that whole... Wait, so you're trying to turn this into a video game? I mean, we already kind of did. It's a game, so it's called a set of Porsche. So basically, uh, we host servers, and you just gotta take the link, hop on the server, and if any one of us happens to play on the server, you get to drive with swim risk free. Whereas 981 and his team are well aware that a lot of his fans are young males that might try and replicate what they do, and knowing that that is incredibly dangerous, his team has done something so you can join them in the safety of your home. They built this online Assetto Corsa server so you can drive, swerve, drift, whatever you want. All you need is a computer, internet connection, okay. it's recommended you have a steering wheel. Details to join the server are in my description. Do you think you're wanted by law enforcement? They definitely know about us. I mean, me specifically, I have no clue. If I am wanted, I'm sorry. I don't hate NYPD, I just don't want the ticket. What do you go by? Brick 250 or Brick 50, either one is fine. And what's your specialty? Well, right now, I think the fans would probably say my specialty is not police chases, cop chases, and stuff like that. But in my opinion, I think Drift is on. How many police chases do you think you've been in? Honestly, bro, I lost count, probably, because I posted at least 30, I think, so I think I have... You have at least 30 police chases on the right now. Yeah. Why is this worth potentially going to prison? No matter how you look at it, it's not worth it at all. Me being how I am as a person, bro, it's fun, bro. Who are you? So I'm Reaper. What's your specialty? I'm more of a low-key swimmer. I'm not really making videos and stuff, but, you know, if you know, you know. Do you have any little brothers? Oh, yeah. If they wanted to get into this, what would you tell them? I'm a hypocrite, I wouldn't recommend this part. You don't recommend it? Um, this is a question for the whole group. How often do you guys have to change vehicles? I say okay. if you do it right, you could probably go a year to two years where you have to swap the car if you're smart. But you could do some dumb shit in one night that makes you have to swap. What do you go by? My name's Billy. And what's your specialty? Honestly, the fans kind of know me as Lester, I guess I would say. That's, um, if you get in trouble, you can call me. I'll help you with your situation. So what makes this worth doing? It's not worth doing. I wouldn't recommend doing it if I were you, but I can't make your decision for you. So if you are going to do this against our best wishes, I guess, just think about other people on the road and do whatever you can to bring it home without hurting yourself, hurting anybody else, or damaging any property. Tell me how you think about taking on risks and danger. 
I think if you're ever going to take on any risk or any danger, whether it's physical risk or financial risk, I think you should write down every single one of the variables that could be a factor in the risk that you're taking, and you should figure out what's the worst case scenario that could go wrong, any other kind of scenarios that could go wrong, and you want to figure out what the best case scenario is, and if that's worth the gamble for you, for the risks that are laid out on the table, but if those risks are worth the reward that you're going for, I think you should go for it. And if at any time you get too scared, the risks are too much for the reward, you don't want to risk it for the biscuit, then stop, because you're not built for it. If you want an extraordinary life, you have to take extraordinary measures and risks and action, but know your lane and know when to sit out. And this is something I'm sitting out for. Also, the story of Icarus, when you have wax wings and you fly too close to the sun, never feel like you got it on lock 24-7. The story of Icarus comes from Greek mythology, and it recounts the tale of Daedalus and his son Icarus, who were imprisoned on the island of Crete by King Minos. To his Escape, Daedalus fashioned wings made of feathers and wax for him and Icarus. Warned by his father not to fly too close to the sun, Icarus disregarded this advice. As he soared higher and higher, the wax melted, causing his wings to fail, and he plummeted into the sea and drowned. This story serves as a cautionary tale warning against the dangers of overconfidence and recklessness. And this story, I think, is very relevant to Mr. Squeeze Benz. My son Stolen couldn't make it, but he wanted to say what's up to y'all, feel me? Hello, what's going on, y'all? Anything you gotta say for the camera, brother? Shout my son Jolly too, he couldn't make it. Yeah, so you asked us these questions. What do you think of swimming? So here's the thing, I think danger is good in somebody's life, but when you endanger someone else while you're having your own fun, that's where I'm iffy about it. Yeah. I, I admire the courage, I admire the bravery, but when other people's lives are at risk, to me it's like it's a hard battle, you know what I mean? Like, uh, if I lost a friend because someone was just having fun on the road, I'd want to kill that guy. Yeah. I also, as a young man who does dangerous things too, get it. But I highly advise you, don't try it out. <laughs> yep. That was interesting, though. We met these guys here to do B-roll of their cool cars. But while waiting their turn, a couple of them decided to do donuts in a parking lot where there were many families. Because of this, the police were called, and in a few minutes, an NYPD helicopter arrived on the scene. This is what happened next. Well, we got a dip in the tech. You seen that, right? Yeah. Oh. Hello folks, I'm Tommy G. Here with the most wanted drivers in New York. Look, they're peeling out. Folks, I wasn't lying when I said these guys are wanted. Well folks, I think it's time we get out of here. Stay safe. Realize that the choices you make can impact other people. There's dangerous things you can do that just impact yourself. When it impacts scared civilians, Let's go. I'm conflicted with this video, folks, because a lot of young people are gonna think this is cool, and they're too, their brain is not developed enough to realize the risk to other people. And I feel like you gotta pick and choose your battles. And uh, like, while it is exciting, statistically, eventually, someone is gonna crash, someone's gonna die, someone's gonna get paralyzed, and the game that sounded so fun is not so fun anymore. Went from Game Boys to scales, now I play the hell. I flex some fake Maddie boy that he copped on the rail. Turbo sticking out the Civic, looking like a snail. Switched to V three times, but we lost the trail. Got my boy from out of town, he's here to crack some safes. My cousin he dropped a paddock off a pack of nays. Outside the impound, doing donuts, and I smacked the gate. I had a lot of opposition, but they passed away. I know my cousins love me, I'm a fan favorite. I need a hundred bricks like my man Frank from trying to steal my secret recipes. Folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You want to watch another? Here. You want to subscribe? Over here. See you next week. Wow, that was a good video. Interesting.